All right, guys, this is Brandon from Brandon's Garages. So today's going to be a short video. Uh, we are going to be doing a DCT filter change on the C8 Z06. I've hit 7,500 miles. Uh, you're probably thinking, well, why are you not at the dealership? Well, um, I've got the filter set up myself. Uh, I actually ordered this from Amazon. I got the link from Justin Horsepower Obsess. Uh, he's got some good links in his video where he does the oil chains and DCT filter and also your e-torch bits, which are required. Uh, and so we're gonna talk just for a second. Um, so there is a big debate right now on my community about whether you need to do the flush procedure. And if you don't do it, that you void your warranty. I personally believe that that is inaccurate. Um, and the reason I believe that is there is a, a podcast with uh, three of the top engineers. Taz is one of them and two other guys. I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But anyways, uh, long story short, they have said for do-it-yourselfers, if you do not perform that procedure, as long as you're changing the filter at your recommended intervals, that you're okay and you're covered. And they've said that themselves. Uh, driving around normally does pretty much the same thing as a flush procedure. Now, that being said, what I did is I drove the car. I uh, pulled it up on the rack, I kept it in drive, and I uh, kept a couple thousand RPMs for three minutes, uh, and uh, which is similar to what they do. They do it for about eight minutes, and that should flush things through. So I feel confident that I've got what's needed um, in this filter. And not only that, I will be doing this more frequently um, than what they recommend, because the next change is going to be at like 22.5 or something, which ends up being about 30,000 miles, and I'll change mine probably with every oil change um, moving forward. Uh, so anyway, so let's uh, get started. Um, here's, I showed you my filter. Uh, and then real quick, just to give you a little teaser for what's coming here soon, is my next video, which is gonna be good, is gonna be part one of nitrous install. So I'm um, putting nitrous on the Z06, and I've got some teaser stuff here. And so I'll leave it at that, but uh, just like and subscribe to the channel, and you can follow the nitrous series. So we'll be putting nitrous on the car and doing some testing and kind of see how it does. Um, people have done that. It's not like it's any groundbreaking, but I haven't seen anybody do it correctly where they've actually been able to get on a quarter mile and not have issues. So I've got a plan. We'll talk about it later. Um, hopefully to get to where it actually is able to make a good pass and not have all the issues that others have had moving forward. So we'll see. Uh, maybe it'll be successful, maybe it won't, but either way, it'll be a fun learning process. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe if you'd like to see that. Uh, so now let's get on it and get the car lifted up. All right, so there's a bunch of E16s. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, at least uh, 20 plus. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do this without taking this black panel off. I'm gonna try to just to loosen those to see if I can simplify this a little bit. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not, but we're gonna try it. All right, I'm gonna upgrade it to this thing. It's faster, it's too slow. Well, I thought I could save some time, but unfortunately uh, not the case. So uh, you've got on the corner here, 13 and uh, some tens. Uh, they're gonna have to come off. So this, at least at a minimum, all these along here have got to come off. So I was hoping to save a little bit of time, but that's not the case. So we'll knock those off real quick and then hopefully I can slide this out without having to pull the full plate off here. All right, so we're gonna pull this down. I'm noticing the debris come out like crazy. So I know there's a bunch of stuff behind here. Um, so I think I can pull it down now with just taking these initial pieces. I think I can pull forward and then out. So we're gonna try this, but I just wanna capture because I'm sure you're gonna see a lot of stuff fall. So back some stuff on here. Of stuff under there okay so let's take a look all right so here's what we're working with and now access is easy uh you got your four screws and those are also a little torque so i have to figure out what size they are i can't remember off the top of my head so all right so we're gonna pop those loose and then pop that cap off here in a second so one thing uh in justin's video there's a big harness uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to show you here but basically right here it runs along in this a arm and he had his rubbing. Mine is not touching 
it seems to be intact, but it's one thing to check because his was. Mine is a 24, I don't know if it's just that or what, but um, it, mine's still intact, but it's very close. Like I can feel right here, like it's millimeters from touching at the bottom there. So I could see how in somebody's car, it's dressed a little bit further, that's gonna rub. And as this arm moves up and down, it's gonna rub it. But mine looks okay and seems to be all right. Um, but make sure you check yours. Uh, Justin mentioned that on his. Uh, so I'm checking mine while I got on lift. And I'm gonna go through and also look at all my harnesses while I'm under here. Make sure nothing's rubbing up for seeing his because that kind of worries me. Um, so anyway, sorry. So let's get started. Sorry to get sidetracked here. And one other thing here too I do want to show is look at all the heat shielding on the factory headers. Uh, you can see them right there. Um, so Cooks has headers out now, right? But they, as far as I know, you can buy blankets for them, but they are going to come bare. So think about how much heat shielding they've got right there and you're throwing headers on your car if you don't end up getting the heat shielding of some sort or coat them, that's gonna be a lot of heat's gonna disperse in that area. And there's harnesses that run. These aren't harnesses, but either way, obviously it was intentional um, as far as for the heat shielding. Uh, and so just keep that in mind if you're ordering headers. I'm just curious how that's gonna do over long term. Uh, make, may should consider probably coating them or at least getting the blanket, uh, at least based on what I'm seeing here, so. Okay. Um, so it's actually E8. And then obviously I'm hand wrenching this for obvious reasons. Uh, there's like inch pounds on these things, so it's not a lot. Uh, and as soon as I get these loose, I'm gonna go grab my drain pan so I can capture some of this. All right, so I remembered uh, I have this Blackstone oil analysis set up. Uh, I have two of these extra, and so I'm gonna try to capture some of this and send this off for analysis. I know it would be better if it was actually in the drive line and not, and this, this is gonna be more contaminated, but I'm curious what's all in this DCC fluid. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can capture enough to send off for analysis, uh, just for educational purposes. All right, let's see if we can uh, capture this. This is gonna be difficult because the way this is gonna drain, but I'm gonna try to get enough to get analysis on this. I'm just curious what's all in this stuff. Um, obviously it's probably clutch black material, uh, that's my guess. Uh, and then maybe the lubricants that have broken down, uh, but they coagulate somehow. And I'm just curious, what is coagulating that's clogging these valve bodies? So let's see. Okay, so I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I'm gonna try to wiggle it and then capture some of this fluid. Uh, let's see here, it's gonna be hot. Ferris Bolton explicitly states, do not fry this. Uh, it's finicky aluminum. Uh, uh. I'm gonna do some reinforcements here. Plastic pry tool. thing don't play. Okay, so this thing kind of gave me a little trouble. What I did, I actually have a pry tool that has a plastic top on it. Uh, it comes like this. And I use that to just kind of gently twist it out of there, because I couldn't do it by hand. I could not get the thing loose. So now it's loose and that protects everything and you can't mar anything with it, it's just plastic. So that's what I did. Uh, now we're gonna see if we can capture this as it falls without getting in my eyeballs. It's gonna be difficult to capture on camera here. Just cause of the lighting and whatnot. Okay. So basically just rocking it back and forth as it falls down. Left and then right and left and right. I can feel it wanting to come. I'm just hoping I can capture some of this fluid. And you know what I'm gonna do, actually? I'm gonna set a uh, container down here that I'll actually capture just in case I can't, so hang on. 
Okay, I finally got it loose enough. This took about 10 minutes to get the stem thing wiggle loose. Okay, here, so let's try to capture some of this wood here. Enough to get a sample, I hope. All right, so just looking at it, you can't really see much uh, on the filter itself. Uh, as far as whether it's dirty or not, it's very hard to tell. Um, let's check my o rings intact. And so, anyway, sometimes you in the past you could see debris and stuff like that with these new canisters. I can't see anything different with this. So, so now we've got to replace the o ring over these non wiring tools. Just pop that one off. We got a new one that comes with it. You're gonna pop that one back on, and there's just little ridge that it goes into, and you put some wool on it. So we'll put some of that dirty wool on it, uh, and then it's just uh, we'll pop the filter in. All right, pop that in, and we're gonna get the bolts on. So. Okay, so we're done. So we're gonna do a reset. Uh, you can do service mode or you can start the car, either one works. All right, so you see where it says basically replace transmission filter soon, Put dismiss. So we're gonna go over to maintenance. I'm gonna click on that, center click on this button here. Then you go down to reset um, transmission filter. And it's gonna say, would you like to reset values now? You're gonna click yes. And now it's gonna say transmission filter 100%, transmission filter 84%, and engine oil is at 60%. All right, so we're gonna cut the car off. All right, so that's it. Um, I didn't show the reassembly because it's kind of straightforward. The only thing I will say um as just kind of pay attention when you're taking everything off uh, as to what goes where because um there's three different types of uh bolts back there uh and so as long as you know where each one basically the metal pan uh gets your e-torx bits and everything else kind of gets uh, the others so uh that's an easy way to look at it so all right so like and subscribe like i said i got the nitro series coming up next um and then also uh we're going to look at the oil analysis if i can get that back in time i'm sending that off so hopefully i'll be able to get an idea of what's in this fluid and see what we're all worried about so all right stay tuned thanks for watching